One of the most controversial Bible passages may have been added to the Bible later. The passage is about women being silent in church and is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 34 to 35. Women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate as the law also says. If there is something they want to learn, let them ask their husbands at home for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Even conservative scholars argue that these two verses probably weren't written by Paul. If you open some translations like the NRSV, you'll see a little footnote. Other ancient authorities put 1434 to 35 after 1440. Okay, so some ancient manuscripts had it in a different spot. What's the big deal? Well, there's actually no other examples of scribes rearranging Paul's arguments like this. If it was originally after verse 33, it would be highly unlikely that a scribe would have moved it to verse 40 and vice versa. In the thousands of manuscripts we have of Paul's writings, this never happens again. However, if these verses were originally a gloss that a scribe added in a margin, then this could explain why it appears in different places depending on the manuscript. The trouble with this text goes all the way back to the early church. While our earliest manuscripts do contain these verses, there are early signs that the text was not stable. One of our earliest complete copies of the New Testament is the Codex Vaticanus. It includes a scribal mark after verse 33. While there is some debate, many scholars agree it indicates a textual variant. Though some of these scribal markings were added later, specialized ink analysis has shown that these particular markings were probably made by the original scribe. Then in AD 546, Bishop Victor of Capua ordered a rewrite of the passage, omitting verses 34 and 35 in a bottom margin. In other instances where Victor made corrections like this, it was to preserve ancient manuscript traditions that we no longer have access to. Bishop Victor most likely believed that these verses were a later addition to the text. In addition, in the 12th century manuscript entitled M88, it appears that a scribe initially started copying from an earlier manuscript that did not include these verses. He then added them later with a scribal mark indicating where they should go. But it's more than just manuscripts. Dr. Bart Ehrman explains that these verses interrupt Paul's argument about prophecy, which flows a lot better if you take them out. They also contradict chapter 11 verse 5, where Paul assumes women can speak in church. Again, relating to prophecy. For these reasons, the majority of critical scholars today believe these verses are not original to the text, and I will leave sources for that claim in the description, but it's all these people and more. So who added these verses and why? Well, one of the leading proponents of this view, Philip Payne, suggests that a 2nd century scribe added them in response to shifting attitudes towards women's leadership in the church. Plus, it was perfectly normal for scribes to sometimes add words found in the margins into the body of the text. As Payne explains, all scribes at times omitted words and then added them in the margin. So when they found text in the margin, they risked being criticised if they did not put it in the body text they were writing. Though there are other scholars who disagree that the verses are a later addition. A minority of scholars believe that these verses were in the original text, but aren't actually Paul's words. They argue Paul was actually quoting the Corinthian church in these verses, and then disagreeing with their position in verse 36. Let me explain. In the original Greek, Paul introduces verse 36 with this little guy, which is pronounced A. It's usually used as a comparison meaning than or or. But sometimes Paul uses it as an exclamation when responding to an idea that he wants to criticize. So perhaps here it's kind of like Paul saying, what? An example of this is 1 Corinthians 6, 16, where Paul talks about believers sleeping with prostitutes and he says, what? Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? Here the ah uh, acts as a kind of exclamation to his point. 
So maybe if the verses are original, Paul could have been replying to the Corinthian church in order to refute the idea that women should be silent in churches. But the problem is in verses 34 to 35 don't contain any typical Greek quotation markers, so it's difficult to say for sure that these words should be read as a kind of quotation. There are many commentators who believe the text is original and contains Paul's original thoughts. These scholars do not believe there was enough time for a significant addition to have been added to the text and then become widely accepted before our earliest manuscripts appear. The issue with these verses is slowly starting to be recognised in popular Bible translations. The NIV 1984 edition had these verses connected to the previous paragraph, with no footnote. However, the update in 2011 moved the verses into their own paragraph and added a footnote showing that they recognised the verses stood alone. In David Bentley Hart's translation of the New Testament, he places the verses in brackets, similar to the story of the woman caught in adultery in John's Gospel, as a way of recognising that it was probably not original. So there you have it. While we can't be 100% certain, there's a very strong case to be made that these words were not the original words of Paul. As always, you can check out the sources in the description to read more on this topic for yourself. My name's Lachlan and you've been watching Bible Unboxed. Commandment number 11, share and comment below.